Hello, everybody out there with type 1 diabetes. This is Dr. Jody Stanislav, and today we're going to talk about intermittent fasting because somebody asked me that on the thread the other day for one of my other videos. And for those of you just finding me, I'll let you know who I am. Um, I've had type 1 for 40 years. I've dedicated my career to helping all of us with type 1 out here in the cyber world. I've been running a virtual practice helping people struggling with their blood sugar levels to have less highs and less lows so we can confidently live a healthy life. And I've been coming on live, Facebook, basically since the end of March to really help inspire you and educate all of us with type 1 on how to get good blood sugar levels so we can keep our immune system strong. And I just really wanted to do my part in um, just spreading goodwill in today's crazy world. So I've been coming live for over two months now. So this is probably what, number 60 maybe? <laughs> um, let's see. I don't have a perfect blood sugar level today. People are like, it's always perfect. Um, I'm 128, which, you know, obviously is perfect in most people's eyes. Um, I do have my high alarm set at 120 because I really, my goal is to keep my blood sugar levels between 80 and 120. Um, I'm going to go on a bike ride after our little Facebook video is done because I really like to keep that tight tight, healthy range, um, which is exactly what I want to help you guys do. But so I'm not talking exactly about diabetes today, but a lot of people have been asking me about intermittent fasting. And, you know, if your question is, should somebody with type one do an intermittent fast? Um, the first thing that I will ask you is how confident are you at knowing how to dose your insulin properly? Because if you know how to dose your insulin properly, you can make the needed adjustments, right? But the reality is many people have not been taught how to, in, to adjust your insulin properly. So you'll, your basal rate or your long acting will very likely need to be changed and you'll have to know how to do your short acting differently. So that's something I can teach pri my private patients. Um, I can't give medical you know, direction on how to do intermittent fasting on a Facebook Live, but I can say it's possible if you know how to dose your insulin properly, right? Because this is something that's so important to understand. The only reason why we go low is from injected insulin, right? Because if you stop taking your insulin, you should never do, never do that because you could risk going to the ER for diabetic ketoacidosis. But if you didn't take insulin, it would be impossible for our body to have a low blood sugar. Right, so the reason why we have lows is improperly dosed insulin, right? People say exercise always makes me go low. And I'll always say, well, actually no, it depends on how much insulin you have on board, right? I finally have learned um, and I can teach patients how to exercise and not go low and not even have to eat. So it's all about knowing how to dose your insulin properly. But yes, there's lots of benefits to, um, you know, there's studies that show Intermittent fasting can help with weight loss. It makes us more sensitive to insulin. So maybe you'll need less basal overall, right? Maybe you're even on the days you're not doing it if you don't do it every day. Um, maybe you'll need less basal insulin overall. Um, it can reduce inflammation. It can turn on genes that help with cellular repair. It can reduce cancer rates. It can improve brain health. Um, you know, it can improve car health. So, you know, humans didn't grow up being able to go to a fridge three or four times a day, right? So the human body is very well equipped to go for long periods of fasting. It's also been part of religious, um, you know, ceremonies or, um, you know, like Lent, for example, you know, what are you gonna give up? Um, some people fast, some people fast, right? So uh, yes, it's the body is very well equipped. If you know how, for a type one's body, you can do it, um, but you have to know how to dose your insulin properly. I did a three day water fast once, I did a seven day water fast once, and I'm alive. I've figured out how to not go low. So, but you actually have to also have to watch out for not going into DKA because we do need a certain amount of insulin, right? What I learned when I did my seven day water fast is I actually would probably, if I were to do that again, which I probably never would because it was pretty intense. <laughs> I'd probably have to drink some coconut water every day because I think I needed to take more insulin than I was actually taking. So although my blood sugar levels were perfect for seven days and didn't move, I think that I was, I probably was, I mean, I felt so sick that I just kind of attributed it to being sick. I did this 20 years ago before I went to med school. So I didn't entirely know what I was doing. Um, not like I know now, <laughs> but we actually need a certain amount of insulin in our body at all times. So just because you're not eating and you reduce your insulin and your blood sugar level is perfect, does not put you out of risk for going into DKA. So I think I was down to something like two units of insulin per day. And so, but yet I think 
I think now when I look back on it, how sick I felt, I could have been kind of teetering into, into DKA. So if I were to fast again, that period of time, I would probably take more like three, four or five units of insulin a day and then sip on some coconut water. Um, but again, do not do this at home. Do not do this unsupervised. Um, this is not medical. I'm not recommending this to you. I'm not telling you should do it. I'm telling you that if you are interested in it, do not do it unless you know how to properly dose your insulin and protect yourself of not only lows, but of highs. But yes, in the standard population, there are benefits of intermittent fasting. But there is a group of people that I don't recommend intermittent fasting to, and that is if you're under tons of stress. Okay, because if you're under tons of stress, it takes a lot of energy to fuel your body. And if you're going to fast, your body's going to be even more stressed out because it needs to find fuel, right? So if you've been massively stressed and you feel like your adrenals are, work, are you know, not doing well, you probably shouldn't be skipping breakfast. That's not my suggestion. So, but if you're feeling vibrant and vital and healthy and haven't been stressed, then you can consider intermittent fasting. But I never recommend intermittent fasting pe to people that are under a ton of stress because the fasting itself can be stressful to the adrenals. So that is my two cents. If you want to learn some information on how to better dose your insulin, hey, guess what? I have some resources for you. You can check out my website, which is posted right there, and click on T1D classes. And I have three foundational videos that I would love to have every type one know. One is how to get off the blood sugar roller coaster. That gives you the foundational training that I want everybody to have how to do your basal rates right, so important. Number two is how to dose properly for your meals, right? Because carb counting alone isn't sufficient. And number three is how to exercise and master your blood sugar. You shouldn't be going high and low all the time when you're exercising, and these, this course will teach you that. So thanks for watching today's video. Um, please leave a comment below what you like, what you don't like. This video topic was directly a result of somebody's request last week. And I do apologize for those of you that are my, my big, big time followers and know that I'm on here every day, Monday through Friday, right around three Pacific, six Eastern. I missed yesterday. I was in an unfortunate event that did not allow me to come online yesterday. So I apologize. And you know, I don't know when I'll stop doing these. Um, I don't think I'll probably do them five days a week for the rest of my life. <laughs> I might cut down soon, but maybe I'll get to my 100th one because I think I'm at 60 or 70 and then probably kind of toned down. But I have a lot of resources that I'm always creating. I'm here to help inspire anybody that's struggling with type 1 diabetes that we can get off this blood sugar roller coaster and live a long and healthy life. So please check out my website. I've got free videos there. I've got free handouts you can sign up for. You can see my classes and all of that. So Dr. Jody Diabetes, you just put those three words into Google and my website pops up. Uh, but the website is drjodynd.com. So thanks so much for watching today. We've been talking about intermittent fasting. Do I recommend it? How do you do it? I'm not an intermittent fasting expert, but I'm just giving you a little teeny, teeny answer to a question that we could actually talk about for an hour. But hopefully you're feeling inspired by um, just knowing that people of type 1 can do it if you want to. <laughs> Have a great day. I'll be back tomorrow. Bye for now.